All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Liz. I like your right, test one, too. Looking good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Emmanuel Ministry. Lindsay, you all right this morning? Doing good? Fresh? You live on Facebook. Welcome, everyone, to Emmanuel Ministry. Lee Grand, Kentucky. Lee Big. Belle Grande. It's big. Like you said, it's in the it's out in the country, but God comes out this way. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're glad to have everyone this morning. Getting closer to Christmas, if anyone didn't know that. Getting close, getting close. So praise the Lord. You live on Facebook today. I pray that you're with us and join it already. Getting set. How many of you come to get a word from the Lord this morning? Hey, Hallelujah. Amen. Do you look forward to Sunday? I mean, I don't just say that. I really do look forward to Sunday. The, the older I get, you know, when I was younger, I, whew, I dreaded it. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to go definitely in June. I didn't like that. Praise the Lord. But the, how many of you look forward to come to church on Sunday? It's such a blessing, no matter what night you've had. And we had a really long night in a parade last night. I didn't realize Glasgow was 74 miles long. So praise the Lord. I've always went and saw the parade, but I've never walked it. And my legs are telling me this morning, you walked it, so praise the Lord. It was a blessing, though. Got to minister to a lot of people, too. I mean, it's amazing to walk through there. I was dressed up like the Grinch, but I got to pray with people, praise God. It was amazing. I, you wouldn't believe how many people were saying, God bless you, God bless you. And it was just a blessing. It was just amazing. I was just having a time, I tell you. I was so blessed just to see so many kids that were happy and enjoying life and people that... Uh, wasn't in feeling the best, so praise God, we got to pray with them, and we just believe that uh, somebody's going to go along and water that, praise the Lord, but God will give the increase, won't he, so praise the Lord, as we get started in here this morning, we just like to uh, get everyone settled, and then we, of course, we go to the Lord in prayer, it's, it's not a vain repetition, we do that out of respect for him, and how many of you know you can't pray enough, but we can speak to our problems in our life and speak to that mountain, that's what's been coming to me all week. Mountain, get out of my way. Hallelujah. If there's a mountain in your way today, whether it be dead or whatever you're going through, it's got to get out of the way when you speak to it and you believe it by faith because that's what it's all about. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, I just asked you live there streaming on Facebook and here if we could just bow our heads in reverence for the God of the universe, all right? Well, Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. You sent your Son, born of a woman, to help us and to guide us and to lead us and to give us eternal life. We're so thankful for that today. As Brother Brad said, first and foremost, we thank you that we're born again. And if you're not born again today, I pray this word or something be said in the name of Jesus, that your heart would be receptive and that you would allow the Lord Jesus to come in your heart. Because, Father, we know that's the most important thing in the world is to be born again and be on our way, and then all that that comes with it, we can learn and be taught as we sit under great teachings and great anointings. And we thank you for this church. We're so blessed to be a body of believers. We thank you for this building and what God has done here in Lee Grand, Kentucky. We don't take it for granted, those who are watching live on Facebook. We have a beautiful facility. To God be the glory, and we're going to praise Him. The world builds big towers big places because of big businesses why couldn't god have a beautiful place and we know you should have the most beautiful place father here on earth and we know you do in heaven so as we come together we believe we trust we stand in agreement as a body of believers today that your word will never fail and we know there's one thing you can't do and that's fail father so we come to you we believe you we trust you and we come in one accord today even as they did in the upper room and we know there was a mighty russian wind that came through 120, 120 of them, Father, and that may be about what's here today. And we thank you, Father, that you would just rest upon us and give us strength and wisdom and revelation. And you said in your word, if any man lack wisdom, we ask you for wisdom today because wisdom is the most powerful thing we can have under that anointing, Father. We give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. All that agreed said amen, and amen, and so be it. So, again, welcome to Emmanuel Ministry. Uh, we may have some first-time visitors here. I don't know that this is your first time here, but anybody here a first-time visitor, first time you've been here in the manual ministry in the church here in the building? Briar, you've been here before. 
Briar raised his hand. <laughs> this man over here, he was in Sunday school, and he stood up, gave a little testimony, and praise God for that. So we, we'll get you a card if they haven't already done that, and we'll get you that. Roy, we got one right over here. Yeah, he said, you're from Louisville. Yes, sir, if that's right. Yeah, and he drives Amish, and the Lord directed him here. So praise God. We're glad he did. And I know there'll be something here that God will utilize and go through someone and speak to him through the power of God. I know he probably already has through Sunday school. So thank God for that. The Word of God is rich and powerful. So as we get into the announcements, we have one visitor. And uh, we'll say, first of all, the sanctuary is open for prayer each Sunday from 9 to 9.25 a.m. Classes for all ages follow at 9.30 each Sunday morning and again at 6.30 each Wednesday night. Uh, the second one is we are taking cash donations to help with Operation Christmas Child Ministry. A basket in the foyer for that. It's in the foyer. Uh, the newly daily bread devotionals for December through February are in the foyer. Also, we have uh, starting after service today. That's what time of year it is, guys. We have what? The Christmas practice for the play so in the sanctuary for everyone to uh, play on sunday for each week until the 18th lunch will be provided our christmas program will be december the 18th at 10 30 a.m so starting today after service there will be a practice in the sanctuary everybody probably knows that by now but if you want to be involved in that see sister amy or someone else you got something you need to say yeah Go i just ahead. want to add one more thing i do have um i think everybody pretty much knows but um if you have children participating in the program, I have a thing on Facebook that's just feed that gives you information on practices, uh, what we need, those type of in that type of information. So be sure you look for that. It will be by invitation only. So if you can look for getting ready for the miracle invite, and that way you can be updated on any information that you need to know. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Sister Amy. All right. The, mayus, the other one we have here is the woman's craft activity plan for this Sunday at 3 p.m. has been canceled. So that will be canceled today. It's the woman's craft activity plan that was for today has been canceled. The next one is the Emmaus Christmas gathering will be Saturday, December the 10th. That will be next Saturday. The board will meet at 4.30 p.m. The share a dish meal will be at 6 p.m. followed by a time of sharing. Anyone who has attended a walk or flight can attend and bring their family, and that will be next Saturday. So we won't announce this again. This, this is the last Sunday we announced that. The men's jail ministry will be at the Hart County Jail on December the 18th at uh, 3 p.m. The woman's jail ministry will minister there on December the 12th, or 12th, listen to me, December the 27th at 7 p.m. Got a tongue twister there. Well, praise the Lord. But jail ministry is powerful. We're involved in it. I can speak on that myself. So it's, it's really God's, God's using these men and women that are going in there. So thank God for that. And we'll just be a part of that. During Christmas, I know it's a sad time any time, but during Christmas it seems like when we go in there that it doubles in uh, attendance. It's sad, but it's true. And, uh, and they're already sad before they get in there. So we, we want to take them some hope and tell them there is a way, the only way, and that's Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord for that. It says also here, since Christmas is on a Sunday, this year we will meet at 1030 for worship and communion. No Sunday school. Don't worry about it if you can't come, but if you can, please come. Praise the Lord. It's a great day to be here and take communion and worship and sing. So those are pretty much the announcements for this morning. And uh, other than that, I'd just like to say he is an on-time God. Is he not an on-time God? If you would, please stand to your feet. If you can't stand, we understand Stand on the inside, please. You stand on the inside long enough, you'll get to standing on the outside. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, something good's going to happen to you today. Would you do that? Yeah, hallelujah. You don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God this morning, and God will come through every time. Praise God for that. Come on now. We've got to get a little fired up. You've got to get some space. Maybe say, scoot over and make room for Jesus, because that's what it's all about as we get into the worship side of it. We're thankful for that, and we just give God praise, and we'll turn it over to our brother, Dennis. Are you ready, brother? Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We are ready. Uh, our first song this morning is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Amen. What were the angels doing? They were um, in Luke chapter 2. It's called, and uh, the heading is An Angelic Encounter. 
I love this. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible. Uh, that night in a field near Bethlehem, shepherds were watching over their flock. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. This is the Passion Translation, by the way. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere, for today in Bethlehem a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by the miraculous, this miraculous sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then all at once in the night sky a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of heaven, and they all praised God, saying, Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven. For there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. Amen. The most joyous news the world has ever heard. We've talked about that before, but this is a big deal. This is a big deal. It doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any higher. The Jesus Christ came. The Bible says, um, Always be ready to give an account for the hope that is within you. So we didn't have any hope before Jesus Christ came, right? We're Gentiles. Most of us are here Gentiles. And uh, as Pastor mentioned the other day, uh, we're engrafted. We are engrafted in because of Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So it's only through Jesus Christ. But it's a big deal. You know, the angels were... Telling, the, again, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. So we're just going to sing about that. Hark the herald angels sing. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy. second birth born to give them second birth you know jesus was talking to nicodemus and he said unless a man is born again he cannot first thing he said was he cannot see the kingdom of god and then he said unless a man is born again he cannot enter the kingdom of god 
So my testimony is I was raised in the Catholic Church and had years of religious uh, education through grade school and through high school and knew all about Jesus, but he wasn't the Lord of my life. I knew all about him. I knew he is quote-unquote Savior of the world, but it didn't apply to me because I hadn't called on his name and asked him to save me. The Bible says, For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So um, it's a big deal. But he says, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of god the bible says the god of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers there's some there's a veil there's some blinders on so if you're wondering what we're singing about this morning if you're wondering why we're excited uh it could be that the god of this age little g-o-d has blinded your mind that's how that's that was my situation that was my case the blinders were on even though i had years of religious education so I was kind of dumbfounded. How is this possible that this happened to me? How could I be so close? How could you be so close and yet miss it? It's a big deal. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I could see it then. It was like, you know, you hear the songs about, um, I once was blind, but now I see the songs like, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. So for me, the veil was lifted, and I was able to see clearly. <laughs> and I thank God for the second part of that. And unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Who wants to enter the kingdom of God someday? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was falling. His body on the cross. His blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon You've been redeemed by the curse of the curse, amen. By Jesus, you've been redeemed. One final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now, death, where is your sin? I resurrect.
you thankful that he is alive amen we serve a living god amen forever he is glorified amen he is worthy he is worthy of our praise amen forgive me Ethan I figured that was the capo <laughs> so can like, you ooh, forgive me I'm about to get high on this one <laughs> here we go <laughs> you sounded good though you sounded thank you, good thank you thank you <laughs> sorry about that here we go yeah there we go no high like the most high right. <laughs> how great the chasm that lay between us how high the I could not die in desperation. I turned to heaven, spoke your name. Forgiven, the King of Kings calls me. 
the hope that is, is within you. We should always be ready to give an account. Somebody needs to know. Somebody needs to know. Amen. Every 
soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety every soul Your name is 
just want to speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Over every heart and every mind. Yes. Because I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Something about that name. Something about that name. This is a, it's a hard conversation, but it needs to be said. If you look at this bracelet that I have on my wrist, it says Jesus for Jackson. And I'm sure most of you know what that means. And I was faced with a situation where the answer was cancer. And is God still good when the answer is cancer? It's yes, he is. Is he still good when your baby has cancer? Yes, he is. And the minute that those words were sold to me, the only thing I could say was Jesus. I was very intentional about making sure that Jesus was before all of this. That's why his group is called Jesus for Jackson. Every single person that reads our updates is going to read Jesus' name before his. Every single person that reads a shirt with his name on it is going to read Jesus before his. I hand these bracelets out everywhere I go to strangers because whenever they look at it, they're going to read Jesus' name before his. Before everything we do, I'm telling him, Jesus is for you, Jackson. Jesus is for you. He's for me, and he's for you. Please, please don't underestimate the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. It has so much life in the name of Jesus. When you say his name, heaven invades the earth. When you say his name, darkness cannot stay. Healing takes place. My son diagnosed with an extremely rare aggressive cancer has just shocked the world because Jesus was put first. Amen. From the second they told me it's cancer, I just said, Jesus, just be with us and go before my son, Jesus. So please speak the name of Jesus over your children. Speak it over your life. Speak it over your situation, depression, anxiety, financial burdens, your marriage. Jesus. Amen. That's the answer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for the name of Jesus. You have that this morning you want to worship the Lord with. We give you that opportunity to come. Come, let us adore him. King of kings and Lord of glory, God of mercy and God of grace, God of awesome ability. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I want you to know Jesus is bigger than what's the matter. Jesus is bigger. I don't know what's the matter. <laughs> right? I don't know what's the matter. But Jesus is bigger than what's the matter this morning. Oh, come all you faithful. Hey. 
worthy of our attendance. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for this people that's gathered here from all over the country, north, east, south, and west. You said they'd come to Lee Grand to worship you, and today they have, and I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, as they've come today. They're like wise men. They came bearing gifts, and wise men bear gifts to the king, so that's what we do today. King Jesus, we come and we bring our gifts to you to honor you, to love you, to worship you, to support the ongoing ministry that you have here around the world. We thank you for each of these that's come and give. May they be blessed in their giving and blessed in their going today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, all of you, but Andrew, Andrew, don't sit down. <laughs> we were very fortunate um, Friday night to be in a meeting in Lexington, Kentucky <coughs> with the RMAI people, and uh, to my surprise, Brother Andrew Brazy was there. Andrew's one of our missionaries uh, from the Mission the Asian Commission. Is that pretty close? Uh, he deals with uh, people on, in a great area of need across our world, so come on, brother. And we're uh, very thankful that uh, he was uh, heading back home to Colorado. And I just asked him if he'd stop off this morning and share with us. And that's just uh, just a blessing to have him today. And how many of you remember when he was here the first time? Do you remember him being here? Uh, he, he did such an awesome job. And uh, he's a, a, a Navy man like Brad. And uh, just a delight to be around. He and his family have blessed us. And we want to bless them and uh, hear from what uh, the Lord is doing through them uh, in that ministry. So we just uh, introduced Brother Andrew Brazier to you. Brother Andrew, you take your time when we get through. If you want to work it into communion, you can. If not, point at me, and I'll bring it back into communion. And uh, we appreciate you. You just take your list. Sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Maybe I'm muted here. Hallelujah. How about now? Can you hear me now? Okay, okay, I hear myself now. All right, hallelujah. I turned it on, but I was still muted, so um, I only had half the, half the battle won. <laughs> hallelujah. Well, it's so good to be here. There's a lot of people that, that weren't here the last time. So how many, raise your hand if you weren't here the last time I was here. All right, praise God. So we got a, a lot of people who haven't heard um, a lot about the ministry and what God has been doing. Um, my wife and I and my seven-month-old son, Joshua, uh, we moved to China in um, 2007, with $35 of monthly support and a seven-month-old baby. And um, so uh, how many of y'all would want to move to China with $35 of monthly support and a seven-month-old baby? Uh, y'all are smart. <laughs> These Kentucky people are smart here. You know? and, so, uh, um, and so we didn't really want to either, but we wanted to obey God. And, and um, now God's blessed the ministry and blessed, um, blessed us so much more financially, way beyond that. Um, and I want to share some of that this morning. Um, but before I do, I want to just... Um, um, just, I want to kind of weave in what God has been doing in China and Laos and Myanmar and Thailand and even sending resources into North Korea, but I want to weave that into just reminding you uh, through the Word of God about thankfulness. Now, I know Thanksgiving is over. I, I'm, not, I'm not like stuck in November, um, but uh, at the same time, we could thank God. We could spend the next three hours thanking God, and it, He would be worthy of more than that. Amen. 
because God is worthy of our thanks and our worship, and He's done so much for us. Um, and so I want to, as I, as I get going, I'm going to uh, share some scriptures that talk about thankfulness. But, uh, but I want to just, uh, we, how many believe we have so much to be thankful for? How many are thankful for America? Praise God. Um, God has blessed us in America with, with so much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful for even just the, the, the fact that we can come here. And the, the fact that when I drove down the road, there was a sign out in the road that said, there's a church here. Because where we do, all of our churches in China are underground churches. We can't advertise. We can't put a sign up outside the building or outside the road or outside the village. We can't, we can't do that. But here in America, we've been blessed by God uh, with the, the, the freedoms to be able to do that. Um, and then when we have w- windows, we have to cover the windows so people can't look in and see us worshiping because the, the government or the police or the Religious Affairs Bureau uh, could look in and, and cause us problems. You know, just like in America, in America we have the FBI and the CIA and Homeland Security and all these different federal organizations. Well, in China, we deal with an organization called the Religious Affairs Bureau. And the Religious Affairs Bureau is comes to really just persecute Christians, but they're supposed to be controlling the religions, whether they're Buddhist or, or Muslim or, or Christian or, or whatever religion it is. They, they're there to regulate or make sure everything stays in order. Well, how many know Jesus didn't do everything in the order that the government wanted? Jesus did things in the order of the Father. Amen. The order of, he said, I only, I only say those things I hear my Father say, and I only do those things I, I see my Father do. And so he was, he was said, I'm about the business of the Father. And that's what we want to be, amen? And so, um, so I'm just so thankful for it. I'm thankful for even the songs that you all are singing this morning. It, it, you could get saved. You heard the gospel even in the songs. Talked about the blood of Jesus, the resurrection of Christ, the fact that the Trinity, that Jesus was, was God born in the flesh, that he was the word of God. I mean, just the, the, the gospel, I mean, you know, we need, we'd bring to bring it in a little bit more, but you could get born again really through the songs we sung this morning. And, you know, I'm so thankful for this church in particular because you guys have made a choice to sow specifically into the Bibles that we print. We print several thousand Bibles every year. We've um, printed and distributed over 16,000 Bibles this year, and we've got another um, 10,000 that are just finished getting printed that we're getting ready to um, finish paying for and then, and, and then start distributing before the end of this year. Uh, it's kind of been slowed down because of all these. You know, in America, most people, thank God, we're kind of over COVID. We're just, people aren't, you know, I don't see any masks in here, but if you have a mask, well, that's, praise God, uh, that's your freedom. But most people are just kind of done with it. We're not still being, the government's not still controlling us with that. But in China, um, some of my leaders from some of the churches that we planted and the leaders for, from the Bible schools, the underground Bible schools that we've established and, 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 and planted, they're having to take COVID tests every day just to leave their homes. And this is what, almost three years later? Well, it is for China. It's, we, we, they started in, back in, we started hearing about COVID in November and December of, because we were in China, my family and I, I, I in, in November, December of 2019, we started hearing about it. So we're looking at three years, they're still dealing with this. And then we know it's you know, a real disease, but I'm thankful to God that we have those freedoms in America. And so we, we should just, we, we, there should never be a day that we don't thank God for, for America, for the freedoms, for the liberties, for, for the Bible, for the, for the fact that we can have a church and worship, that we don't thank God that, that for our pastors and the leaders in the body of Christ that teach us the word. And we, just, we, we should spend more time thanking him. You know, and God is, he's an on-time God. You know, I, I, um, I came this morning for prayer at, at nine, and um, um, Sister Amy, I don't know if she may be helping in one of the, is she's here? Okay, she, she told me that, um, that she had a, a, foreign exchange, a foreign exchange student from China that had been staying with her, and they're coming back. That per, like a young lady, I think, and she's coming back for Christmas, and I just happened to have a couple of books, Brother Hagen's um, The New Birth in Chinese, and then another book that we just, we just finished personally translating. It's a, a book called There's Always Hope. It's by a pastor out in California who actually is also a Rhema graduate. His name is Pastor Bayless Conley, and he got born again, a little eight-year-old boy, in actually the, the area that I was born in, or not born, the area that I grew up in, uh, just outside of Medford, Oregon, a little eight-year-old boy led this pastor to the park and invited him to a, a, a ministry so he could get saved at a little park in, in Ashland, Oregon. 
just outside of Medford, Oregon. So if you're, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're 8 or, or uh, 108, uh, God will use you if you'll just open your mouth and tell people about Jesus. But, but I, I, I'm thankful that I, I never expected that in uh, Horse Cave, Kentucky, that I'd be passing out Chinese books. But, you know, the, and, and I, I wasn't planning on being here this morning, but I, believe it, I believe, don't believe it was a coincidence. The Holy Ghost has divine appointments and divine opportunities for us to share the gospel. But, but I'm believing that as these books go that, that I gave to Sister Amy earlier, as they go out um, into that, that young lady's hand, that the power of the gospel, the, pow- the, the, the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I believe that the power of the gospel, the power of the gospel is going to go into that young lady's heart and she's going to be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, set free, delivered, have new life in Christ, and then she's going to take that to her family and her friends and her neighbors and her co-workers. You know, if you look at the people that, that were instrumental in Billy Graham getting born again and the people that were instrumental in the man that led Billy Graham to the Lord, I don't remember all the names, but it was like somebody who was basically just a regular person led somebody else to the Lord and led somebody else to, and then Billy Graham got led to the Lord and he led a whole bunch of people, what, thousands and thousands of people to the Lord. Hundreds of thousands probably, maybe millions, I don't know the numbers, but, but um, God has been so good to us and we have so much to be thankful for. But um, the, one of the reasons why I'm so thankful that this church has partnered with us um, for, for several years, but specifically extra this year in, in the printing Bibles is because the Chinese government has been, they've actually edited the Bible. They're very similar to, well, probably almost even worse than what, if you look at the, the, the Jehovah's Witness Bible, it's the, the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. If you look at John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in our, in our King James Bible, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, if you read the New, King, the, the, the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures that the Jehovah's Witness have put out it says in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was a god with a little g saying that jesus was a little god and that, and that he was a god but that's not the truth that's a lie it, you can't even find that if you look at in the in the in the in the in the greek it's not like that but they've changed it well the chinese government the communist party in china has taken and they've edited the bible to take out things like the deity of christ the virgin birth the, Jesus, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. One of the, you know, the, the, the scripture where um, the woman was caught in the act of adultery and they were wanting to stone her. Um, they've changed that to where it says he actually stoned her. Now there's different, there's, there's different edits, like there's different Bibles floating around. And we've been able to uh, print a, a little pamphlet, like a little trifold pamphlet that gives the scriptures and what they actually say in the real Bible, and then it, compa- it shows what the scriptures say in the, the Bible that the Chinese Communist Party has, has translated, and then we're, we're distributing those so people can open up the Bible and go to those scriptures and find out if they've got a real Bible or if they've got a, a, a Bible from the pit of hell. Yeah, and so, but we're, but, the, but we're so thankful that this church and other churches like you across America and a, a few other parts in the world have partnered with us to be able to print Bibles so we can get Bibles into the hands of the people in China. So we thank you. We appreciate you. The, the church in China gives their thanks, and, and um, so you guys have a part in that. Praise God. We give glory to God for you. How many are thankful for the Bible? How many love the Word of God? Praise God. It's, it's the only thing that could set us free and the only thing that can deliver us. And so um, in addition to that, um, we also um, have printed 12,000 different discipleship books this year and, and distributed them. Um, some of Brother Hagin's books, um, the, the Believer's Authority, The New Birth, Why Tongues, In Him, and then some of the other, other, of the other study guides that Brother Hagin had that were translated in Chinese. Um, I think this one's called this Redeemed from Sickness, Disease, and uh, Poverty, Sickness, Disease, and Spiritual Death. Um, I don't remember exactly what the English title is. But, um, and then we, this year, a few months ago, we translated... Um, Nancy Dufresne's book. Have any of you heard of Nancy Dufresne? Or the late Dr. Ed Dufresne, um, his wife, um, he went home to be with the Lord a few years ago. But we just translated her book, Answer It, um, a few months ago into Chinese and got those printed and distributed. Um, we've been, there's another uh, Raymond graduate called Pastor Dean Brown. He's up in um, New York in the Bronx, and his book is um, Rebuilding Your Foundation of Faith. We, we translated that last year 
and we've been distributing those. Um, and then um, Pastor Rob Thompson's book, um, it's on excellence. We, we translated that into Chinese and we're distributing that. And then um, Pastor David Sharon, he's a pastor out in Las Vegas. A few months ago, um, we, I think we finished that back in um, April maybe, or right at the beginning of this year, uh, we, we did um, Pastor David Sharon. Uh, he's uh, also a Rama graduate and speaks at uh, the camp meetings and different things at Rama for um, Pastor Hagen and Miss Lynette. Um, and then this, this book here I was telling you about, we got that. But you guys have a part in getting... So right now I can't get back into China because it's still closed down to Americans. Um, several months ago I met with... Um, I, I flew to Thailand and eight of my key leaders, my, my top leaders from China flew. They were able to get in and out of China because they were Chinese nationals. And the restrictions for them were, were a lot less. Um, and I flew to Thailand and I met with them for... Um, a little over two weeks, and we had planning meetings and prayer meetings, and I taught them the word. And then when they went back to China, they had to quarantine for 28 days. Anybody quarantined for 28 days because of COVID? No? Okay, not, not unless you, probably not in America, unless you got it and then maybe quarantined and then you got it again or something. You're not going to, but they had to, so they flew. When I got to Thailand, I had to quarantine for 10 days in, in a hotel. And then when I got out of the quarantine, we met with them for, like I said, a little over two weeks. Then after we met with them, they flew back to China. When they landed in Shanghai, they had to uh, quarantine for 14 days. And then as soon as they got out of quarantine there, they took them and put them in a, in a van and took them to the airport and flew them to the other city that we work out of um, in southern China. And then they had to quarantine for another 14 days there. Um, and so that's a sacrifice. It's a commitment, you know. Um, we actually had some of our, some of our churches, uh, one of our churches, they, they locked down. and They were getting ready to lock down. Um, this was... Uh, I guess it would have been maybe the end of last year. Um, they were getting ready to lock down, and they heard about the lockdown, and so they all got together and locked down together. They brought a bunch of food. They, they brought rice and vegetables and food and some meat and things, and they locked down at one of the house churches, and they just spent those 14 days studying the Word of God. How many of you would be willing to lock down here at the church for 14 days if they told you that they were going to be locked down? Well, praise God, we don't have to, but, but it, was, it was good. God used it, and they were able to study the Word and pray together and worship together and fellowship together. Um, but they're continuing, like I said, three years later to lock down. So I can't get back in the country, but we're continuing to send resources over. Our Bible schools are still continuing to teach the Word of God. Uh, we have 318 students uh, currently studying, in the, studying the Bible in our Bible schools, um, and we're teaching them the Word of God, teaching them... Um, um, faith and healing and about the blood of Jesus and the deity of Christ. And one of the reasons why it's so important that um, we have the Bible schools is because in China, not only are you dealing with... See, the, the devil wants to steal the word, right? The devil's goal, his job, his, his, his main focus is he wants to steal the word of God because he, he knows that the word of God can heal you, it can deliver you, it can set you free, it can give you peace and, and joy and wisdom and, and provide all your needs and give you more than enough so that you can be a blessing to others. That, that's why the devil wants to steal, steal the word. And so he uses the government in China to steal the word, but he also, there's a bunch of cults in China. And there's one specific cult called the Eastern Lightning, and they believe that Jesus already came back, and he came back as a woman. Um, and, you know, it's a lie from the pit of hell, but... But they, what they'll do is these cults, that cult and some other cults, they'll infiltrate the churches in China and they show up on, and they start attending the services. These are house churches, underground house churches. And they show up at the churches and then they develop relationships with all the people in the church and they get everybody's phone number and then they'll actually call the police or the Religious Affairs Bureau and turn in the pastors and the churches. So it's, you know, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. And then, they'll, and then when, the, when the pastors are in jail, then they'll rally everybody together and call everybody up and say, we can't let this stop us. We've got to keep studying the Bible. We've got to keep studying the Word. We've got to keep growing. And then they start teaching, and they try to rise up as the leaders of the church and start teaching the false doctrine. And the very things that they undermine are things like the virgin birth, the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, I can get along, if you're, if you're Baptist or Methodist or, or whatever you are, as long as we, there's a few things that, that we can disagree on, it doesn't really matter. But there's some things that I don't compromise on. If, if you don't believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, I'm not going to work with you and I'm not going to help you to do ministry because that's, that's foundational. It's fundamental. It's, it's non-negotiable. 
Jesus was born of a virgin. He's not qualified to be the Savior of the world. He's not qualified to be the Messiah if he wasn't born of a virgin. And we, they talked about that in Sunday school this morning. If you missed out on Sunday school, you, it was good. You just, I encourage you to make the effort, make the sacrifice to come out and, and be part of Sunday school. Um, but they talked about this, that this morning. That, that it, Pastor mentioned it as, as kind of, it's a dialogue. Sunday school is good because you can, you can kind of talk and, and everybody gets to give some input. And, and, um, but uh, I, the fact that the reason that Jesus is so special is because his blood was pure because he was born of a virgin, and his father was God. Um, but, then, and then they, the, but the other things they undermine and they take it out of the Bible or the, the things the cults undermine is um, the, the resurrection, the, Jesus, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead physically. His body rose from the dead. He's alive today, praise God. How many are thankful, God, that Jesus rose from the dead? And so they've, they've, the, the cults try to undermine that. The fact that, that um, Jesus is God come in the flesh. The fact that he rose from the dead, the blood of Jesus, the virgin birth, um, the, the eternal judgments, the fact that we will stand before God one day and he's going to judge us based on what we did with the free gift of salvation, with the fact that Jesus was, was provided as a Savior. Now we need to receive him and make him our personal Savior and our personal Lord. Um, uh, uh, re the resurrection of the dead. The Bible talks about there's basically foundational, basic things um, eternal judgments, the resurrection of the dead, things that God... and so, But that's what the cults, that's what the devil wants to steal. I mean, he wants to steal healing from us, and I believe healing was paid for in the atonement. He wants to steal that, but like, like they said, um, I think it was this morning during Sunday school, they said, you can go to heaven if your body dies because of sickness and disease, but you can't go to heaven if you don't know that the blood of Jesus is the only thing that we're saved by grace through faith not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's, what the, that's one of the biggest things that cults try to teach is it's a works-based salvation, that you have to do enough good works, and one day you'll get enough points, and you'll do enough work that you can be saved, that you can earn salvation. And so our Bible schools, you know, we, we teach that in the Bible schools, and you guys have a part in us helping to train up pastors and leaders. And so about, a, about half of our Bible school students are young people that are, that are just wanting to learn the Word of God so they can serve, serve God and, and reach the lost and maybe plant churches. And the other half of our Bible schools, students are actually pastors and leaders who are already pastoring churches or, or running churches. And so that's important because the, most of these pastors, you know, have, have never had an opportunity to have any formal training. Your pastor studied the Word of God at, at Bible school and and, um, and, and, and knows the Word of God, and he, 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 he made a sacrifice and a commitment. He, he, he set time aside to study, but most of these pastors never had that opportunity, not because they didn't want to, but because there were no Bible schools, well, or, or very limited Bible schools, and they were hard, and you know, they, some of them didn't know about any Bible schools. Well, since we got there, we've been able to plant the Bible schools, and you have a part in that. And so we continue to, to do that. We continue to um, do ministry in leper villages, uh, there's 129 leper villages or leper colonies in the province that we work in, that where we moved in 2007. And um, uh, we, so we go to these leper villages and our, our teams, uh, we have 38 different department heads over our different ministries in China that are continuing the work, even though it's been shut down to Americans in, in China. We, because we were there so long, we've established um, a good group of people that are continuing to, to do the ministry. And that's really the goal. I mean, if, I tell people, I said, if if I was in China for, basically we were there for 13 years uh, before COVID, if I was in China for 13 years and I had to leave for a year or two years or three years or, or, or whatever, and everything fell apart and everything stopped and all the ministry ceased, then I need to go find something else to do. I think I need to go sell ice cream or something because I've been a failure. But praise God, by the grace of God and by the mercy of God and by the wisdom of God, and, and, and because we've focused on teaching men and women of God, Chinese nationals, the Word of God, and got them filled with the Holy Ghost and taught them how to be led by the Holy Spirit and, and o obey God, the work continues, praise God, and you still have a part in that. Um, so God's been so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to read a couple of scriptures here real quick just to... Um, Let's go to um, 
Oops, there we go. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. Like I said, I want to in, entwine thankfulness into what I'm sharing about. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for the body of Christ in America. Um, thankful for your pastors um, and, and, and all of you that are part of making this church a success. When, when I share the testimonies of what God's doing in the different ministries, if you, if you volunteer here and you serve here and you give here, and you pray for your pastors, and you're praying for your brothers and sisters, you not only are affecting what's happening here and in other parts of America, but also in China and Laos and Myanmar and Thailand as this church partners and, and, and prays and gives towards our ministry. So Luke chapter 12, verse 48. I'm going to start in the, in the middle of this verse, but it's, it, you've all heard this. It says, for, for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. You've all, we've all heard this. We all know this. To whom much is given, much is required. And so um, we all are responsible to be good stewards of what we've been given. In America, we've been given so many Bibles. And you guys have been faithful to use your Bibles, but also... You, you've, seen the response of, you've seen that you've been given many Bibles, and so you're giving Bibles to other nations. Praise God. Uh, but you've been given the Word of God, and you're also helping to get the Word of God to other nations. And we praise God for that. We thank God for that. We thank God for this fam fam church family. Um, but, but that applies to every area of our life, that, that we all have so much to be thankful for, and we've been given so very much. And really, the first... I think the first thing that, that, you know, we to whom much has been given, much is required. The first thing that, re that God requires of us is thankfulness. That's what He wants. That's the, if you can't do anything else, see what God, every day look at what God has blessed you with. With the Word of God, you know, if you have a car, if you have a house, whatever, if you have food, no matter how much it is or how little it is, the first thing that God asks of us throughout the Word is thankfulness. And so we should be so grateful and so thankful that we're able to come and freely worship God here this morning, that we were able to drive a car or somebody drove us in a car or we were able to walk here or, uh, you know, we, what, however we got here, that God has been so good to us. He's, he's such a good father. And so I just want to encourage um, you this morning to, with thankfulness. And I want to read 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16, First, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, I'm going to read through um, verse 19, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. So rejoice always means you're, you're rejoicing in Christ, in God your Savior, in the Lord, in what He's done for you, in the fact that you've been born again, that we were sinners on the way to hell, that when we were yet enemies, of, we were the enemies of God, that Christ came and poured out His blood to redeem us. And then it says to pray without ceasing. So we should be praying for our brothers and sisters here in this community, praying for, like I said, your, your pastor and his wife, the other leaders, the, 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 your brothers and sisters. And then it says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, it doesn't say give thanks for everything. We don't give thanks for sickness and disease. We don't, he doesn't tell us to give thanks for poverty and, and, and hunger and, 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 and murder and death. We don't thank God for that because God didn't give us sickness and disease. If for God to give us sickness and disease, he, he doesn't have any. There's no sickness or disease, disease in heaven. And the Bible says that he, he, his will is that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. So for God to give you sickness and disease, he'd have to steal it first because he didn't have any. He'd have to take it, he'd have to take it, go to the devil and say, you got some sickness and disease and they have to take it from the devil and then they have to give it to you. But God didn't do that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we give thanks in everything we give thanks, not for everything. We don't give thanks for not having enough money or we can give thanks that we're, we're alive and that, that God's promises have been provided and that, and, and, that there's, there's more than enough that's already been provided in Christ. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more scripture here, and then I'm gonna, I'll give some more um, testimonies of what God has done and what you guys have part in. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And actually, the word meditate is actually the word that means to murmur or to speak, to say over and over and over again. You, you meditate. It's not meditate like the, the, you know, the, the monks do. Where they go, mm. It's where you, sp- you speak over and over. You take the word and you put it in your mouth. And then you say that word. You can do it quietly to yourself out loud when you're at work. If you're working on the computer or you're fixing a car or you're out planting um, seed or whatever you're doing, you can meditate and rehearse You can speak the word out of your mouth. But he says here, in verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so we should be doing everything with thanksgiving. Thanking God, the the fact that we woke up this morning. How many woke up this morning? Okay, so some of you, some, I know some people just don't raise their hand for anything, but that's okay. Just be thankful that you woke up this morning. If you didn't wake up this morning, you wouldn't be here. We've been praying for your families. But, you know, it's, it, it, one thing I encourage you to do is uh, respond to Jesus. Respond to the Word of God. Respond when, 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 when pastor's up here preaching when he, when he says something, respond, because you, that's really what faith is. It's acting on the Word of God, responding in response to the Word of God. When you're a doer of the Word and not a hearer only, that's when you're blessed. And so, you know, when, 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 when your pastor or a minister comes and asks you to, to, to respond to the Word or say something, you know, say, uh, say this with me. I'll just do that. Say this with me. For the Lord is good, the Lord is good. and His mercy endures forever. Say it again. For the Lord is good, good. and His mercy endures forever. Now, when I do that, or when your pastor does that, or when any any minister, or even just any any brother or sister that's up here sharing, or when you know when they're leading worship, does that, they want you to respond because there's a blessing. There's there's something that happens when you speak the word, when you when you respond to the word, when you get involved with the word, and there's something that happens when you don't. Nothing. If you don't respond to the word, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if the Bible says if you're a doer of the word and not a hearer only, then you'll be blessed in your deed. But if you're a hearer and not a doer, then you become self-deceived. And the thing about being deceived is we've, you can be deceived in one area and have God's revelation knowledge in another. We've all been there. Maybe not you, but me. There's been areas where I was being a doer of the word and I was in obedience to God and God was blessing that area, and then there's been other, and there was other areas in my life where I, was, I was, wasn't being a doer of the word, and I was self-deceived. So I just encourage you to just, just with all your heart, you know, we, a lot of times we, you know, preference gets, I'm not sure why I'm going down this path, but I feel like it's the Lord leading me, but preference is what gets us. Okay, like, so I have a preference, McDonald's is not my preference. It's not really super healthy. It doesn't taste like beef. Pastor's son raises beef, and that tastes like beef. McDonald's, that doesn't taste like beef to me. If you work for McDonald's or own a McDonald's, forgive me, but anybody work for McDonald's or own a McDonald's? Okay, good. Praise the Lord. And so (laughs) it tastes like a McDonald's hamburger, and it's a familiar taste, 
but it doesn't taste like beef, not to me at least. And so, uh, and they say it's all beef, but my, I, I, have, I have a theory, I think maybe they take the whole beef, like the tail and the skin and everything, and they run it over, a, they walk it over this like grinder and the whole, it's all beef. I don't know, I'm not sure, because it doesn't taste like beef to me, but. <laughs> but I have a preference. I prefer McDonald's, I pre no, I, no, no, I prefer, I would prefer an Angus steak to McDonald's. And, and that's okay, it's okay to have preferences, but you can't, you and I, we can't be led by our preferences. Because I've gone to McDonald's before because the Lord told me to and shared the gospel with people there. And people have been born again. And it wasn't my preference, it wasn't what I wanted as far as food, but we can't be led by preference. And God will let you go and eat what you want, and He'll give you times where He, does, he'll just, he doesn't say anything, and then He'll let you do what you want. But so many times in life, we're led by preference. And the more that you allow God, whatever you'll allow God to get involved in, He'll get involved in. And whatever you don't let Him get involved in, for the most part, He's not going to get involved in it. Like, you don't have to ask God what clothes to wear every morning. You don't have to. But there's been times when I asked God and He told me, and I wore something, and somebody came up because they liked it or they, they made a comment about what I was wearing that day, and I was able to share the gospel with them. Because I got that day, and I'm not saying I do that every day, but, I, but, but that day, I asked God, He told me, and then it caused somebody to ask a question or make a comment, which opened up a conversation and a dialogue, and God got involved in that situation because of what I wore. So like I said, you don't have to ask God what to wear every day. But anything that you ask God about, anything that you let Him get involved in, He'll get involved in. And when He's involved in it, not only will it be a blessing to you, but it'll be a blessing to God, but it'll also be a blessing to those that are lost and those that are hurting, those that are bound by sickness and disease and poverty and, and, and bound by the devil and addiction and sin. So you don't, have, you don't have to ask God what restaurant to go to. But if you will, He'll get involved in, in your decisions. You don't have to ask God what road to take to work or to the, to the store. When I was 17 years old, I was working for the Forest Service in Oregon, and the Lord told me not to take this one road, but to take another road. To make a long story longer, uh, I was driving down. I, I finally, after, after arguing, and not arguing, but after going back and forth with the Lord, I took the road He told me to. And instead of being on the interstate, I-5, I took a little back road that was like 25, 30 miles an hour was the speed limit. And my tire blew out, and I almost lost control in my little Chevy pickup. And I might not be here today if I hadn't asked the Lord. So you don't have to ask the Lord what road to take. But if we listen, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And the more we listen, the safer we'll be, the more blessed we'll be, the more, of, the more effective we'll be at reaching the lost and reaching the, our community and sharing the gospel. And the more glory, and this is the, this is the bottom line. We want our lives to bring God glory, amen? How many want God, your life to bring God glory? Praise God. And so the more we'll let Him be involved with, the more glory we'll bring Him through our lives. Praise God. And so um, just to give you a quick overview, I won't keep you all day, but um, we, have, we have two homes now, and I don't remember what, how long it's been since I was here. Um, I think we only had one home back then, but now we have a second home for girls that we've rescued from human trafficking, from sex trafficking. And so we have a total of 40 girls now that we're teaching life skills and job skills and business skills to. And um, we have a coffee company where we, we import the coffee and tea. It's actually a coffee and tea company, but we import coffee and tea from, from China and from Thailand. And it helps the girls that we've rescued from, from human trafficking. And we ship it to Iowa, and there's a man in Iowa that roasts the coffee beans. We have our own roaster now. And then we sell those beans, and it helps the girls that we've rescued. Um, uh, it, so, because what happens if you rescue, rescue girls from human trafficking, and you don't teach them life skills and job skills, they'll sell themselves back into it. And so um, uh, we, we ha we've, we've hired people to teach them different things. So they make, these, um, they make these coasters. They hand weave these coasters, actually harvest the plant and soak it in water and, and weave them. How many would have the patience to weave something like this? 
I should pray for you all that have pray, patience. Nobody, <laughs> nobody ever wants to be prayed for for patience, though. <laughs> um, I, I don't have the patience either, so or I, I, I probably could make it, but I don't want to have the patience to do that. I don't, let's say I don't want to do this. <laughs> but they're doing this, and they're listening to the Word while they're doing it, and, it, and it makes, it, they make money off it. So um, is, who, who, lo- who loves to pray in here? Who's like, really, really likes to pray, okay. Who would, if I give you one of these, who would, who would pray? Okay, I'm going to give it to the, the lady in the orange back here. Can, oh, right. Thank you, Pastor. Um, and so uh, they make those, and then um, they also make bracelets. And I've got, if, if you love to pray, um, and you... Uh, you can just, we'll just put them up here and let them, well, or just come, just put them somewhere and they can come get them later. If you love to pray, we'll just call it first come, first serve. After service, you can come up and take one of those bracelets if you promise to pray. So um, pray for the girls and pray for the, the ministry and pray for my family and I. And, um, but uh, so that, and then we, do, so, we, so you guys, you know, if, if, if you ever, if somebody ever asks you when you get to work on Monday tomorrow and they say, well, what did you do this weekend? And you like to, you know, anybody that likes to kind of play with people and joke around? I know that I was, I was waiting for you to raise your hand because I knew you did. So I was <laughs> we are, and so if you like to do that, if somebody says, well, what did you do this weekend? You say, well, I rescued girls from sex trafficking. Or I, maybe you couldn't say that because we haven't done any rescues in a while. But you could say, I helped rehabilitate girls. I, 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 I was in China helping rehabilitate girls and teach them life skills and job skills. And they'd be like, how'd you do that? I thought China was closed. Well, you may not be able to go physically, but your finances and your prayers have been going and are going. So you could say, I was, I was, I was in China helping rehabilitate girls that have been rescued from human trafficking. Or you could say, I was in a leper village providing food and rice and Bibles and to, to lepers in China. And we have, a, we have an orphanage in Thailand with 71 Burmese refugees. Basically, the Burmese government killed a bunch of um, killed a bunch of the, the parents. They, right now, uh, it was about a little over a year ago now, um, the, they had a coup in Burma, or Myanmar, and the government, the military took over the government. And um, they've been going through villages just killing minority groups. Um, the one that we work with the most is called the Karin people. And um, the government has killed a bunch of their parents, and so there's a, there was a refugee camp that was just over the border inside of Thailand uh, where a bunch of these kids fled from um, Myanmar, and for about six years now we've been providing food and education. We hired Christian teachers to teach them the Word of God and to teach them, get, teach them how to read, read and write and learn the Thai language and, and reading and writing and arithmetic. And so you guys have a part in that. Um, and then printing Bibles, and, or you could say, I was printing Chinese Bibles and distributing them throughout China this weekend. Or, because you have a part in that. You guys have the, get the same reward because you, we couldn't do what we do without partners like this church, without your prayers. Um, and so, and then one other thing we do, and I'll uh, turn this over to Pastor, um, we're going to do communion. I've already probably gone lower, longer than I intended to, but um, is... Um, we do agricultural projects to bring people out of poverty. So we've planted over 50 churches in China, underground house churches, and those 50 churches have now planted over 50 churches. Um, and so our main focus is just to raise up the nationals and train the nationals and help them to reach the loss in their communities. Um, but then what we do is we, we do agricultural projects. So does anybody in here like goat meat? Well, there's a few people. I like goat meat, but, there's, so, but most people don't. But that's all right. There's more for me. And so, uh, but uh, we do, we'll loan, we'll loan a small goat herd to, to people in remote villages where they've never heard the gospel, never heard the name of Jesus. And then we help them, we teach them how to breed the goats and how the, you know, as, as the goats reproduce, goat meat is more valuable in China than chicken or pork or beef or it's kind of a specialty meat. And so we can sell it for more. And as it brings people out of poverty, it, it opens up opportunities in these remote villages where they've never heard the gospel, never heard the name of Jesus, to share the gospel and to plant churches. And then our Bible school graduates, we help them plant churches in these villages. Um, and so, and then we also do aquaponics um, projects. We, we build aquaponic systems and then loan out the aquaponic systems. And aquaponics is just basically where you use, you raise fish 
and you raise vegetables and you use the fish fertilizer that's in the water to raise and grow organic vegetables. And so we loan out these aquaponic systems and the aquaponic systems, as they, as they work the system, they're able to pay off this, the loan and then um, it opens the same thing, opens up the villages for us to share the gospel. And the reason we do, we loan a goat herd or we loan an aquaponic system is if the people don't work the system, we can repossess it and give it to somebody else. If you loan money to people, you know, that he owes, his, his, his wife wants a new dress and he, owns his, he owes his uncle some money and his brother some money and by the time he pays everybody back and gets his wife a new dress, he didn't have enough money to run the business and then the business has the tendency to fail. So we, we loan systems or we'll buy equipment and loan the equipment to the people, and then they're able to pay it off. Um, but uh, praise God, God's been so good. Uh, we're also sending resources um, into North Korea uh, through the use of technology and actually even, even pigeons. Um, the, God, the Lord gave us an idea real quick. Um, I can just keep going, but some, so many people weren't here last time. Um, I was watching on Facebook or somewhere, and I saw that people were using pigeons to run drugs. You know, you look at a cute little pigeon and you think he's innocent, like harmless, but you think maybe he might, he might poop on your car, but you wouldn't think he'd... But they were using, they put in little backpacks. If you Google drug running pigeons or drug pigeons, you can find pictures on, online of pigeons with backpacks and they were putting pills in them and having them run pills from either Mexico to the United States and, and then also between the mi places in the Middle East. And so the Lord gave me the idea that if the, the devil can use pigeons God, that God created to run drugs, why can't we use it to run resources for the kingdom? And so we can put a little micro SD card on a band on the leg of a pigeon that, we, that we, we got the eggs, we got the pigeon eggs that were fertilized, we got them into North Korea, and then they, they put them in an incubator that they made, they hatched the eggs out, and then they trained the pigeons, and, now, and then we snuck the pigeons out of North Korea back into China, and we can, we can fly resources and messages back to the church in North Korea on the legs of those pigeons. Um, and so God's been good to us. He's given us wisdom and favor. And um, we're just thankful that we've been able to be part in leading people to Christ, helping them to grow up spiritually, helping them to get filled with the Holy Ghost, um, and then just to meet practical needs for orphans and lepers and, and, and continue to do ministry there. And like I said, we couldn't do it without you all. Um, and so um, is there anybody here this morning, I'm going to turn it over to a pastor, that, that, that's not born again, that you don't know that you're saved by grace through faith, that you don't know if you died today, the Bible says for believers, those who've, placed, those who've placed their faith in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, but if you haven't placed your faith in Christ, if you haven't received the free gift of salvation, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that promise isn't for you. It's, it's available for you, but, but if you were to die without receiving that promise or without receiving that free gift, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and that's eternal separation from God in hell. But God doesn't want that. That's why Jesus came. So if you're here this morning and you don't know that you know that you know that your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus, I want you to raise your hand. Anybody? Now, some churches, and I've done this before many, many times, they ask you to close your, close your eyes. But the Bible says, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before, my, before the angels of heaven or before my Father in heaven. And so, God, there's, there's something about raising your hand and testifying that Jesus, I want to make Jesus my Lord. Anybody here that doesn't know that they're born again, I want you to raise your hand. Praise God. I believe everybody's born again. Uh, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit after service, you can come up and uh, we can help you with that. Or if you need healing or prayer for healing, uh, but I'm going to turn it over to pastor and he's going to lead us in communion. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Praise brother. God. Thank you. So your tithes and offerings <clears throat> don't just pay to make the preacher fat. They're going around the world. And they're doing exceedingly great.